Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special edition of the show. I've got Eric Sigmund here with Ready Vineyards. Uh, we're doing Skype. Haven't done a Skype interview in a while. And um, we're, we're kind of just checking in. We're going to do some COVID stuff, but also just kind of get a little update since I sat down with VJ last year. And Eric, why don't you kind of go ahead and take the reins and kind of introduce yourself and kind of tell us how you got, uh, got to this point with uh, Ready. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's really exciting. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Ready Vineyards. That's a role that I've been in for over a year now. Uh, I had done some uh, consultation work with them uh, prior to that. But uh, in this role, I really oversee sort of the day-to-day -day operations of the winery, as well as sales and distribution. Uh, I take care of uh, compliance and legal work too. So I wear a lot of different hats, but really just trying to make sure that you know we're on the right track that we're uh, getting our wines out there into people's homes and uh, and selling those wines uh, as widely as we can. Um, I got to, to Ready Vineyards actually via a, a friend from law school. So uh, I was actually an attorney before joining the wine trade and practiced international law for three years before sort of jumping ship, if you will, and uh, starting at Total Wine as a wine associate back in Maryland, where, where I'm from. And, uh, you know, my, my legal work back then has really come in handy these days. There's a lot of compliance. There's a lot of legal ramifications of everything you do in the winery and, and with the wine. So that's been really helpful. But, uh, yeah, before working with uh, Ready Vineyards, I served as a uh, wine manager for the flagship Total Wine store uh, in the country. And then was also, for a short stint as well, there. Uh, associate French wine buyer, so helping import French wines uh, for the 200 stores around the country. All right, and then uh, so what? What? How did you get involved with Ready then? Like, so you go from Maryland to Texas? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, honestly, before being connected with with VJ and his son Akil, I knew very little about Texas wines. Um, you know, I'm actually, I have a, a number of different wine credentials. I'm a WSEP3 uh, certified SOM, a certified specialist of wine. But yet yeah, throughout all that education, uh, the, the many years of tasting and experiencing new wines, I hadn't really come across uh, Texas wine or really even been exposed to the Texas wine industry until they reached out to me. And uh, they were, you know, at that time, uh, preparing to launch their own estate brand of wines. Uh, as you know, Ready Vineyards is really, very well established in the state, one of the uh, leading suppliers uh, of grapes to other producers, one of the largest, one of the most diverse vineyards. Um, but they also knew that they had you know, this potential to take their incredible uh, premium grapes and turn that into some really nice fine wine as well. So they reached out to me and uh, you know, definitely interested right off the bat, just out of like an intellectual curiosity perspective. So I started digging into to Texas wines more. And, uh, you know, what I saw and what I continue to see and really do believe is Texas wine is, um, you know, not only very up and coming, uh, it's about to, I think, explode on the national stage in a big way. Uh, the wine that is being produced uh, is really very high quality. And producers throughout the state are winning uh, tons of awards, are getting national recognition. And uh, if done the right way, uh, they could be world class in status as well. So, um, you know, the opportunity to work on the producer end was something that I've always really sort of aspired to and was seeking. So to be able to transition from that retail world and then that wine buying world and actually come to the producer side was a, a wonderful chance. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I have a little more firsthand experience with Texas wines. And uh, in the 10 plus -ish years I've been doing this podcast and yeah. uh, visiting Texas wineries, I mean, I've definitely seen an increase in quality levels. And, uh, you know, having met 
quite a few. Haven't met all the. I haven't met all the old school guys yet and girls. Um, but I've met quite a few of them, and it's been nothing short of amazing. Uh, just having basically everything in my own backyard, um, and then having traveled to other areas, and you know, seeing how Texas really um, how it, how it stacks up against other wine growing areas and the quality of the wines that that we make. And I mean, I tell people this: we have just as we have we have you know ordinary wines, we have outstanding wines, we have you know we have all levels of wine. Here, sure. just like everywhere else in the world, it's not like just because it came from France, it's got to be awesome wine. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> True. Um, but uh, no, it's been great. And then, and going out to uh, West Texas last year, and Neil being able to get me set up with VJ was was awesome. And I had a great time hanging out with him, um, and kind of in the kind of almost like a the little raised area. You can see the vineyards all over from from the office, and uh, uh, that was a really cool experience. So. Yeah, so VJ was doing a lot of really just supplying a lot of grapes, but now he's kind of working on, uh, or he's at least supplying you guys. I guess officially that's how it's really working with with the wines. And his son yeah. is really being we're spearheading the wine side of things of, of winemaking of Ready, right? Yeah, that's correct. So VJ is uh, you know still the the lead viticulturalist, if you will. He's out there uh, still tending to the vines with his crew. Uh, his son Akil is is very much involved in that as well, um, and has been for uh, for a number of years at this point. But yeah, it's really sort of his uh, you know son's uh, aspiration to add that winery element, which is really cool. You know, BJ uh, is as you mentioned one of the industry pioneers. Um, the vineyard was planted in '97, so we're going close on 25 years now. And uh, they've really made a mark in the the Texas wine scene in a lot of different ways. Um, so his son Akil is really, uh, you know, taking that legacy and progressing it uh, in a new direction uh, with the wines. And we really try to, you know, maintain that same sort of innovative and kind of industry leading um, philosophy uh, on the wine side as well and continue to take Texas wine uh, to that next level. So it's really exciting. You know, Ready Vineyards is situated in such a great place in Texas, in the Texas High Plains. The environment, the climate is really conducive for premium grape growing out there. And uh, since you spoke with VJ uh, last uh, summer, we have uh, officially launched the Estate Wine brand. Uh, we've actually uh, had a couple bottlings and releases since then as well, earlier this year, and we'll be doing uh, releasing some more wines uh, in a couple months as well. So it's really, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's really an exciting project. Uh, our wines, uh, multiple wines have received uh, not only very favorable accolades and awards here in Texas, but also some national awards as well, which has been really positive for us. Very nice. And what, what kind of wines are you guys producing right now? So one of the really unique things about Ready Vineyards and that also attracted me to uh, to coming to Texas and working for the Ready family uh, is that they have 38 different varietals in the vineyard, which is just exceptional. So there's a lot of different things to experiment with and to try. Um, we focus primarily about 70% of our production is red wines, and we like to do a lot of different blends. Uh, so we get inspiration from traditional areas, uh, Bordeaux, uh, from Tuscany, from Rhone, and we will sort of take uh, some of those general styles um, and, and use those as a framework to, to make something that um, reflects uh, Texas. And that's really, really important for us. One of our sort of keys is really being authentic and being authentically Texas. So everything we do is 100% estate grown grapes. So, you know, when you get that bottle, you know it's 100% Texas fruit. We actually block designate every single one of our wines. So you could even trace the, that source of grapes down to where it came from in the vineyard, which I think is really cool. Uh, but we have uh, some French style blends, a Spanish blend, an Italian style blend. We do occasionally do some single varietals. So we have 100% Sauvignon Blanc out right now as well. Uh, and we will be doing uh, a couple single varietal like reserve tier wines uh, featuring Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc which we hope to, to release in the near future. Um, so, you know, everything we do, we're really trying to take uh, the best that Texas has to offer. So we focus on warm weather varietals in general, um, but then try to craft them into something that really reflects, uh, you know, the heart of Texas and being very authentic to that. Very nice. Uh, what kind of price range do you guys have for, for your wines? 
Uh, that's a really good question. So uh, in terms of price ranges, we have uh, what we sort of call our standard estate tier will run about $25 to $35, depending on the style and, um, uh, and the production. Our, our reserve tier wines, which are very, very small production, those will usually run 100 cases or less in terms of total production, uh, are a little bit more expensive and they have a higher price range. Generally, you'll see those between uh, 50 to $75. Um, and then we're also uh, launching in July a uh, another sort of uh, a little bit more fun and whimsical uh, set of wines, uh, which I think are, are more designed for, um, for the retail sort of space. And you'll find those anywhere from $15 to $20. So, you know, we really try to make wine accessible. Um, everything we do, I mentioned, is limited production. We have not made a single uh, skew larger than about 750 cases. Um, and really being handcrafted uh, is very important to us. Um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that people can still uh, purchase our wines, have them uh, on a Tuesday night, and not have to worry about you know breaking the budget either. Good, yeah. You know, it's it's. I think it's pretty important for if if a winery can do it to have that. Uh, sub 20 if you're able to do it and then you can definitely go into the more premium and luxury uh, price points um, because that way you can really have a, a wide range of things and something for a kind of everybody type of deal um, yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to like go into specifics with winemaking but I would imagine you have a you have a variety of different type of uh, barrel aging programs uh, not aging or not using barrel using barrel depending on the type of wine yeah, absolutely. That's right. So um, for most of our white wines, for instance, we'll do those in stainless steel, although we did just uh, make a reserve uh, tier Viognier Marsan blend that we age in 50% new French oak. So that's got a little bit more body and richness. It's kind of creamy. It's really, really yummy. Um, uh, almost all of our reds will see some sort of uh, new oak, um, and we will kind of dial that up or down depending on the varietal and what we think you know they need for the particular vintage. Uh, but we really do want to be able to add those sort of premium touches to the winemaking where we can. Um, in general, all the varietals you know we pick independently, we craft them as individual wines, and then we'll we'll do some extensive blending trials to find something that we think will really uh, you know drink the best. And, you know, we're looking to make sort of uh, rich, fruit-forward style wines, uh, not via residual sugar, but the way, you know, that we farm the grapes uh, out in the vineyard. Um, and just try to make something that's easy drinking. It doesn't have to be uh, pretentious. It doesn't have to be something that's going to have to sit in your cellar for years before it's ready to drink. Um, you know, we're trying to expose as many people as possible to Texas wines, uh, but also want to, you know, be very... Um, proud about what we offer people as well in terms of the quality okay and so you talked about that you're you, you've got you're, you're actually releasing your wines you're not letting what's all the craziness is going on right now really affecting uh i guess sounds like not really affecting your release schedule but how much is is the coronavirus and covid is it impacting a lot or is it not really impacting at this point because of you already having all your plans just executing as you would normally yeah from the winery perspective it hasn't uh, impacted us too bad. Um, you know, our team is fairly small uh, out in the vineyard too. It's easier to to keep social distancing practices. Um, you know, we try to be very cautious. Uh, and if anybody was uh, traveling, um, you know, they had to to quarantine. So we were very cautious about making sure that we were following state and, st state and federal guidelines. Um, but yeah, we're we're continuing to execute our plans. Harvest 2020 is really just around the corner, so we mm -hmm. have to keep gearing up for that. Uh, but, you know, we have a, a top notch team, uh, you know, on the sales side is where we had to pivot uh, a bit more. And that's where we started to feel uh, a little bit more of the pressure. Uh, a lot of our accounts were restaurant accounts and we have some amazing partnerships throughout the state. Um, but, you know, this is a really difficult time for them in particular. Uh, but we're fortunate enough to be able to have some great placements uh, like Total Wine and more. You could find a couple of our wines uh, throughout Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston. Uh, and we've really tried to pivot and join sort of this innovative move uh, quickly uh, to online sales and online engagement. So we've seen you know, a really terrific backing by our followers who have been purchasing from us online. Uh, we're doing weekly uh, live uh, Instagram live tastings as well. 
So we're trying to continue that way to, you know, again, bring wine into people's homes, especially during this time when people, uh, you know, are kind of stuck in their homes and looking for something new and fun to experience. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you that um, uh, being a former restaurant person and 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 like we've already like I've already put in my email. I don't say where I work, but I, but my fo- my followers and viewers know I'm still in the industry. You know, just seeing my fellow restaurant people either losing their job or having to really hard, you know highly adjust to how their business model works. Um, and I know that in the retail side that, um, we're able to take advantage of actually on premise only wines because you know, the restaurant's volume is either non-existent or so low. They're not really ordering these, these, uh, wines that are more quote on premise that we're yeah. able to, we're able to sell them. Um, so, I mean, everyone really, I mean, every industry is having to adjust, but I definitely in the wine side, um, we're all having to adjust to, um, how things are going to be different. And then I can, I know that while I was, I haven't really checked in the last probably week or so, but um, looking at just the counties in Texas and cases and all that, you know, definitely out in the counties that, you know, Reddy's in and, and you know, the high plains in general outside yeah. of Lubbock, um, you know, the, the case counts were very, very low or zero in, in some cases. I, I don't know if, if how much has changed in the last week or so. I really haven't checked, but, you know, um, I would imagine that, the vineyards themselves, I mean, as far as people working, there's been a lot of, lot less impact. And I've also talked to how people's like, it's easy to keep social distancing in the vineyard. You're not, I mean, it's not like you have a thousand people in the vineyard working. You only have a few people at a time. And even in the winery itself, it's, you're not, you're not on top of each other like you are in maybe other businesses. Um, so, I mean, I know that this time of year in certain aspects, there's no impact or very little, but like you said, on the sales side, um, definitely an impact with that. Um, and then, um, I don't know as far as you're part of Texas, you know, um, I know that we in San Antonio, they, they, they put the, I, I don't have a mask with me cause we're in my car. Um, you know, they did the whole, you have to have a mask when you go outside. Um, are they doing something like that up in, you're up in Dallas area, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm based in McKinney, and then uh, I am really sort of in charge of like sales territories in in Dallas and Houston, really all over the state. But that's where uh, the majority of our accounts are. Yeah, no, we, um, you know, Dallas was one of the first counties to institute the formal stay at home order, um, and they are actually still considering extending it. So it really depends on sort of what the governor does. But I I know at least locally they want to push. Uh, for continued um, restrictions um, for one way or another. Uh, you know, in McKinney, it's it's similar too. So, you know, just out of, out of precaution and safety and just sort of following those best practices, you know, if I'm out and about, uh, I'll be make, you know, make sure to, to wear a mask. Um, I'll have uh, hand sanitizer with me as well. Um, you know, it's not only my safety, it's other people's safety as well, uh, my family's safety. And it's just making sure that, you know, we're all in this together that the people who are still out there working at retail shops and restaurants and elsewhere, um, you know, they're really critical to, to everything we're doing. And, um, you know, to, to some extent, we're, you know, fortunate to, that we don't need to, um, you know, always be on the front lines, uh, but we have to always appreciate that there are people that need to be out there uh, to, to support um, the, the industry and just, just to support everyday living. Uh, so we should really take as many precautions as we can to, to protect those people too. Yeah. And you've already mentioned that you having your online, your virtual tastings, uh, that's, you know, another good way of doing that. Um, so, because I really haven't, because I have, I am one of the lucky ones and I, I actually don't have as much time as maybe some other people do. Um, <laughs> th- those seem to be pretty successful. And how, how are you normally doing those, uh, those virtual tastings? Are you doing like uh, Facebook Live, Instagram Live? How are you doing those? Yeah, they're a blast. Uh, what we're trying to do is actually do a, a few different offerings. Uh, so we'll do a weekly uh, Instagram Live tasting. Uh, those are on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. and they'll feature a single wine. Uh, so those are sort of smaller, shorter sessions. They usually run about a half an hour. Uh, but the engagement has been ter- terrific. People come on. They're really uh, interested, uh, interested and, and inquisitive 
uh, ask a lot of really great questions. So it's a great conversation. It goes, you know, even beyond our brand. It, we talk about Texas wine or just wine in general. Uh, so they're a really good learning opportunity for people and a good excuse to, to have some wine. Um, we also have some partnerships as well, and we try to partner up with our, our clients and others who are, you know, sort of in the same boat. We're all trying to figure this out together. Um, so we're, we're partnering up with the Austin, Texas Wine Society and uh, Wanderlust Wine Company and doing a, a feature tasting with them as well. And that's via Zoom on the weekend. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we've also uh, sort of published a, a package or two different packages on our website of four different wines uh, that we call our uh, COVID survival kits. So there's a, a pack of our award-winning reds, and then there's a, a pack of four new releases. Um, and uh, we did a, a live virtual tasting for the, the reds, which was a lot of fun and got great engagement. And then for the whites, we actually uh, pre-filmed and published on our website, readyvineyards.com, a video that you can visit at any time. So you could purchase that pack, it gets delivered uh, via FedEx right to your door in a matter of days. And you can kind of go on at your convenience either now or later when this all opens up with more friends and family and uh, and sit down and enjoy that virtual tasting. So I'm um, trying to find different ways to, to get in front of people. Um, and that's been fun. And it's really been, I think, good for, uh, you know, just business in general to be able to, to think about that new uh, avenue. It's something that we hadn't really um, invested as much time as we should have into it. And it's been uh, sort of a good opportunity to do that. And uh, we'll continue to, to use that as one of our channels for sales in the future too. Nice. And um, I mean, obviously you ship in Texas. Are, are you shipping out anywhere outside of Texas? Uh, we're shipping in California as well. Um, so those are the only two states right now that we currently are licensed to, to ship. But uh, I think in terms of consumption and, and sales, that makes up uh, an overwhelming majority. But we're always looking to, to expand, um, you know, the, uh, our shipping abilities. It's just, you know, as you know, each state has their own requirements and licensing schemes and payments and schedules and reporting. And it could be a, a little overbearing uh, for, for a small team. But, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're always trying to, to look for, for new ways to present our Texas wines across the, the country. And that's where your background in compliance comes in handy, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a podcast I listen to, um, and it's the winemaker over at CV, and uh, I don't really promote him a lot. I should because he's awesome, and um, uh, Jim Dwayne. It's uh, now now I'm going to draw a blank on the actual name of the podcast, uh, the Inside Winemakers Podcast. That's it. Anyway, um, he had a lady on who is who lives in California who. That's all she does is she just does compliance with wineries and, you know, I mainly, I guess, California wineries, but yeah. it, while it's kind of a boring subject, it was actually pretty fascinating to hear, you know, what she has to do and, and everything that's involved with the compliance, not just on the state level, but the federal level too. Um, and doing all that. Um, I think, you know, I think we've kind of covered pretty much most of the stuff I sent, sent you ahead of time. What we, what I wanted to talk about, is there anything, that maybe I haven't uh, touched upon that you want to you want to talk about. No, I think uh, you know things are you know we're just continuing to you know try to do our best to you know put our best foot forward for Texas wine, uh, keep innovating uh, in the industry, always looking for for new partnerships. Um, but uh, you know your your listeners can find our whole portfolio of wines at ReadyVineyards.com. Uh, check out our wine clubs as well. We have a, a terrific uh, set of wine clubs that are really customizable. Um, we do quarterly shipments of three, six, or 12 bottles, depending on, you know, you kind of your budget and how much you drink. Um, and you can customize sort of the composition of those packages. So if you really only want red wines, you could select that if you want to mix. Uh, you could do that if you want whites and rosés. We could do that too. So um, you get amazing discounts. You get free shipping invitations to member-only events. Um, you know, we always try to be the best in class when it comes to either the vineyard, the winemaking, and the wine clubs. So we try to offer people, um, you know, the best deals we possibly can. So yeah, check it out at ReadyVineyards.com. Okay, and then actually, um, so we haven't really talked about it specifically. We talked about the vineyard. Is there a storefront, or is there like a place they in Dallas area, McKinney, they can visit, or or do you have to go drive out to Brownfield? Because that's a long drive. No, that's really, <laughs> yeah, it is a long drive. Uh, trust me, I'm out there all the time. Uh, I have spent uh, many many weeks 
uh, of last year out there, but it's a blast because it's beautiful. Um, it's where I could really get, you know, my hands dirty in a fun way and uh, help make that wine. But um, we don't currently have uh, a tasting room in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, and in fact, we really only do private tours right now at the winery itself. Um, so if you're interested in that, folks can find uh, uh, the email address info at readyvineyards.com. Also online, they can email us and we can schedule that. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for, um, you know, some Ready Vineyards wine, again, I'd steer you to, to our website because it's the only place mm -hmm. that has the full portfolio. But with FedEx shipping and we are often running promotions that are flat rate shipping or even free shipping, it's really very easy. Uh, otherwise, you could find our award-winning uh, TNT red blend, which is our Tempranillo blend, and our award-winning field blend, which is our Italian-style blend, uh, at uh, all the Total Wine uh, locations in Dallas, Fort Worth, and in Houston as well. Uh, still working on uh, San Antonio and the Austin region, yeah. uh, but but we'll get there, and uh, hopefully there'll be uh, some more good stories uh, coming in the future as we finalize some of the partnerships. And, um, you know, I, I probably should have looked at this up ahead of time, but did you guys submit some stuff to um, Tex, uh, to Texom, the Texom International Wine Awards? Did you have some over there? Yeah, I yeah. I saw them because even though I wasn't volunteering, I was there for the for the SOM retreat. So I got to see all my uh, volunteer buddies I saw a few years ago. And I'm pretty sure I'd seen some some of the wines there. The how do they do? I don't. I, I really actually don't know because I didn't get to see all the results or I haven't really looked yeah. them all up. Uh, no, absolutely. We've been submitting to a bunch of different competitions and we've been getting some some really good feedback. Uh, we submitted Texom uh, at uh, Texas International Wine Competition in Austin. Mm -hmm. Our uh, 2015 Field Blend was actually selected as Best Texas Red, uh, which is really exciting. And that wine also won a double gold at Houston Rodeo um, uh, this past year. Our uh, TNT Red Blend also won a gold medal at Houston Rodeo and was selected as the, the best in class reserve Tempranillo. Um, those wines are actually right here to take a nice. look at those. Even got the, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I know. I, awesome. I, I was like, wait a minute, I've seen these. <laughs> I yep. know who they yep. are. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we've been really fortunate to have such a, a tremendous reception so early. Um, you know, the wines haven't even been on the market for a full year yet, but people are liking what we're doing. You know, we're taking that feedback and we're continuing that with uh, our 2019 harvested wines uh, as, and also, you know, looking forward to the 2020 harvest um, to, to continue making some high quality stuff. Very nice. Well, Eric, I appreciate you uh, taking some time with me, uh, doing, doing some Skype. It's been a minute since I've done some Skype and, and uh, it's... And, after I, I'm sure once I look at all this stuff, it's going to look way better than my my old school Skypes. Um, actually, I was just telling Eric that um, Skype actually is giving me the green screen. If you must know, it's my bedroom, so it's, it's not that, <laughs> there's nothing to see there. But instead of doing yeah. just the blurred background, I was like, oh, I can add a I can add my 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 uh, image, and you can actually see it. Whereas when yeah, I've done these before, great. I was using some. I was just had a green screen behind me. And then I would add it in and I would add the, the barrel room in post. It's not perfect because it's, it, it, it's a little janky, but it's better than yeah. nothing. And, um, so I'll yeah, no, it looks like you're to... sitting in some, uh, yeah, beautiful Italian chateau there, uh, historic. Yeah. Um, actually yeah, um, this know. is the barrel yeah. room. I don't know why I'm, I'm looking at, so, so I have my phone, which I'm excited. This first time I've actually used my phone as a webcam. It took me like, a okay. few days to figure out how to get this to work um, over USB, not Wi-Fi. And but mm -hmm. I have I have, I have like a monitor where I can see everything over there. But the bell room is actually I took the picture, so I own the license to it. So I'm not using someone else's picture. Mm -hmm. It's the barrel room from Chateau yeah. Petit Pouc in um, basically it's the Entre du Mer section of of Bordeaux, and mm -hmm. uh, they were founded yeah. depending on the documentation look at in 1337. That's kind of why I went to go visit them while I was in Bordeaux. Unfortunately, I was a little late for that appointment. So all I got was just the tour. I didn't get to sit down and do any. I had tasted the wine ahead of time, so I knew it was a good wine. Sure. Um, but I didn't get a chance to sit down with uh, with the owner and do an actual tasting and, and all that with him. But he at least let me walk around and give me a tour. I got to take a picture. And once I got the green screen stuff going on, it was like it's a perfect, perfect picture for it. So, yeah. Um, I love it. Eric, yeah. So, again, thank you much um i'll have i'll have the contact information below in the description so uh you know please check out these guys 
Um, I mean, VJ, again, Pioneer. Uh, I know it's brand new wine, but not the grape growing. That's been going on for a long time. So they know what they're doing over there. And guys, definitely need to check it out. Um, yeah, Eric, that's going to do it. Uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time. Thank you, Mark. Have a nice thank day. Thank you. You too.